Right, so I said last time we were going to go back to Earth, but uh, apparently it would be good if I go back to the uh, the moon or some of the spathy to ask them some questions. We are here in this place at this time just like you. How wonderful. Yes, uh, what's new? Spathy friends. Very little, I'm afraid. We've just been watching the stars. You know, actually, there was something that happened the last month on the 17th. We saw a new star appear between the Sirkini and Chandrasekhar star clusters. We watched it and watched it for three days. We just watched it. Then it went away, vanished just like that. I hope it comes back. Well, that's interesting. So a disappearing star. Three days from the hey, 17th, apparently. You? Goodbye, then, um, Spathy. Have a good life, right. Um, I guess we talk to another one of these Spathy, then. Ah, Hunam! I was just wondering, is Tafayuf still alive? Have you seen him? Is he well? He was sent to your Earth studies a while ago to captain an eluder vessel as part of our mutual assistance pack. Rest assured, he will be an excellent addition to your elite force. Those weeks of intense training always result in an officer of the highest caliber. If you see him, please let him know that I still consider his death valid and expect prompt payment. Thank you. Right, so, uh, let's again ask some question, Very what's new? Little, I'm afraid. We've just been watching the stars. You know, actually, there was something that happened the last month on the 17th. Oh, okay, so we're just going to have exactly the same information, so we might as well skip that. Let's just try and an answer other things. In deep space, we learned little of interest. I suggest you consult the more interesting folk at Spathiwa. Right, so we've got to go back to the Spathiwa, or the Spathiwa moon, I guess, uh, to get to more information. That's probably the best way to go. Welcome back to Spathiwa, Captain. We hope the material we provided your Starbase engineers was sufficient for your needs. Well, we haven't actually been back to Earth yet, but hopefully they have given us uh, some ships. Perhaps, Captain, I will explain. We have been investigating the caster which we took away from the Umga after the Judd v. Bug scandal eight years ago. We have uncovered evidence of something strange uh -huh. going on between the Umga and the Ilrak over the past many years. We suspect that the Unga were using the caster to pull off some kind of long-term joke on the Ilrath, but we are unable to glean any more details. So that's the second race now, which I've talked about um, the Ilrath being pranked by the Unga, so I'm starting no. to believe that that's the case. Um, they wouldn't give us any uh, uh, resources, which is a problem, but let's just ask him about some of these questions, specifically the Urquan hierarchy to be in the hierarchy, and we are afraid of all the other members. Our knowledge on this subject is a bit limited, but I'll tell you what I know. The hierarchy is the construct of the Urquan. It exists to maintain their supreme authority over all the sentient life forms in the galaxy. As far as we know, there are six other races active in the hierarchy, including the gelatinous Unga pranksters, the multi-legged, super-violent Ilrath, who are fanatical in their worship of Dogar and Kejan, the Tradash, a weak and obnoxious race from the Draconis group of stars, the humanoid clones you call Andros think, though they have been strangely absent for some years. The vain Vox, commanded by the brilliant and eccentric General Zex. And the mysterious Mycon, who ramble endlessly about people, places, and events from long ago as though they happened just today. If there are other hierarchy races, we are not aware of them. Right, so the reason I wanted to ask the Spathy uh, about the hierarchy rather than Commander Hayes is because they are were on the side of the hierarchy, so they were bound to have more information. But I wonder if they're aware of any other aliens. 
before being subjugated by the Orkwan, the Umga were a contented and peaceable race who inhabited the region of stars which you call Orion. They spent their time happily exploring and mining the nearby planetary systems and engaging in elaborate and, to our way of thinking, cruel practical jokes. One particularly nasty prank was the time they broadcast a trick message to space declaring the arrival of the Grand Master Planet Eaters or some such nonsense. This caused several alien cultures to go mad with panic, including, you might be surprised to know, ourselves. So the Umgar, they live in the Orionis constellation. Um, so they've already given us a good amount of information, first about the um, strange disappearing star. Uh, around the, uh, I can't pronounce it, the whatever it's called constellation, I'll remember it when I see it, and the Ungar, the Orionis constellation. Um, so we'll have a look where they are. Uh, I think I kind of remember where they are. Um, but let's just go back what in and ask them another question. The ruling council do for you? Yes, and the news is not good. As you know, Androsyn face borders our own, and while we never really liked the Androsyn, it seemed that they weren't out to kill us as everyone else seems to be. Imagine our shock when we learned that they had been invaded and eaten by those fish folk, the oars. Well, actually, we don't know if the oars ate anybody, but we're sure they did something creepy. I sure hope that you're not considering an alliance with them. They are dangerous. Well, I certainly want to go and meet them because this sounds rather interesting, actually. The oars, so they border the Spathy next to the Androsynth, and the Androsynth were clones of humans, I think. So that's interesting. So either the, the oars have some sort of grudge against humans in general, just the Androsynth. So another question, I guess. I guess we forgot to tell you this a while ago, sorry. But we've been so busy lately working on the sheet uh, uh, preparations what? for returning to Spatiwa that I'm afraid it just slipped my mind. Okay, that's all. Hey, I gave you an apology. What more do you want? Oh, right. The thing I forgot. Yes, I remember now. It was something odd that happened to us when we first met the Urquan. We sent out a ship to meet the oncoming dreadnoughts. We wanted to tell the Urquan about the evil ones so they could safely avoid our planet. But when we got close, the Urquan started blasting out this overwhelming signal. Sentient life! We are the Urquan! Independence is intolerable! Blah blah blah! You get the idea. Anyway, in a moment of panicked genius, the captain blurted out, Hold! What you are doing to us is wrong! Why do you do this thing? To everyone's amazement, the Orquan fleet stopped dead in space. The Orquan fixed a tight communication beam on the ship, and the creature spoke a long while and with great passion, almost as though it were intoning a high ritual. The words he spoke were of planet-shaking significance, at least. We assume so. We can't really be sure, because all of the spotty on board at the time were curled tightly in their shell cases and couldn't hear very well. Maybe if you get the opportunity, Captain, you can try to ask the question again. We'll make sure we do, because that sounds like a good way to actually get the Urquan to talk. Goodbye, but, um, again, we'll leave the Spathiwa moon. Uh, although they did actually call it Spathua, so I guess they've moved all together. Um, so, let's uh, go in one more time, see if they've got anything still to give us. Development? What development? Whatever are you talking about, Captain? Are you implying we are up to something? That we have some kind of secret plan? How wrong you are, Captain! Our feelings are injured by your unwarranted accusation! Apologies would be appropriate at this time. Right, so, uh, that was interesting. Obviously you don't have anything to talk about, though. Um, let's just say goodbye and go away. So, a lot of information there. First of all, the disappearing star, the or uh, the oars, uh, neighbouring the Spathy, and the 
Orionis constellation where the Ungar lives. So if we look at the star map here, we've got a few places that we can have a look at. Um, so first of all, you've got the Zokfot P over there, which we met um, last episode. And their homeworld was Alpha Tukane. Uh, that's right on the border over there. Um, so we can go and see them, but they're very far away, so I don't even know if, it's, if there's a point of doing it. Um, Orionis constellation, where's that? So it's near here. So the Orionis constellation, yeah, pretty close to Spathy. And pretty, well, not very close to the Ilrath. So the the um, Ungar must have travelled a long way if they're going to trick the Ilrath, so that's one thing. Um, I'm just looking around. Yeah, here we go. The Chandra Sekhar constellation, or whatever. And what was it bordering again? It was bordering the. Um, no, not the Columbe. There must be another thing around here. Yeah, the Sakini um, constellation. So there's something going on around there. Um, it was on the 17th, so we should probably go and check that out at some point. Um, and then f also we've got the ores, uh, which are somewhere down here. Um, they're probably in an area close to the Spathy south, uh, southeast. Um, so yeah, somewhere around here. Um, I'm going to guess maybe where those green stars are, where that big constellation is. Um, Maybe if we search for Vela, we'll have a better idea of where it is. So there's Vela there. So yeah, it's probably going to be somewhere around those green stars. So that might be a good place to head. Um, since as the when we first met the commander, he said that um, the Vela was next to Andresynth space. And if the ores have taken over the Andresynth, then we definitely want to go and check out that area over there. So that might be something we do now. Um, do I want to go back to Earth, or do I want to start checking out some of this stuff? Since we've got so much to do, um, thanks for the Spathy's information. Do you know what, I think, I really feel like, you know, going to the Zopfot Peak might be a good idea, but at the same time, it's just too far away. It's going to take so much fuel to get back. And, yeah, I, I think we want to go to the Oars, because these guys sound, like, quite interesting, and then the closest as well. So let's head over that way, then, using hyperspace. Don't know if these guys are going to be hostile, or neutral, or whatever, but... I guess we're going to find out. The Andresynths certainly uh, weren't nice guys. They fought for the hierarchy, so whether the ores are on our side or not, um, that is a question that is soon to be answered. So we're getting close to that big group of stars, the seven stars in a kind of hexagon shape. Here we are, the Vulpaculi constellation. I'm just going to head straight for Alpha Vulpaculi, since that's the main constellation star. And they're all green stars. And what's here? We've got a single planet. And Oh, we've got the Mel Norme here as well. That's interesting. Um, I guess we could, while we're here, sell some stuff to them and maybe get some fuel as well from them. What a coincidence. I was just talking about you to the Keel Verizzi, Captain. They express great interest in your explorations and struggles against the Urquan. But, like all of Verizzi, I'm afraid they were hesitant to introduce themselves for fear of, well, frightening you. In any event, it is our pleasure to meet you once again. Now, what can we do for you today? We are going to sell some stuff to you. What would you like to sell, Captain? Alien life form. The Just a little bit of biodata, but it is enough to get us over that 150 credit boundary which we need to buy um, new technology. So that's good. So let's purchase some technology. Now what was it again, alien? What was it? Alien life form protection, I think it was. Let's have a look. The technology we are now offering includes plans for building improvements to your planet landers, which make them resistant to hostile alien life forms. Yeah, that was it. We definitely want to buy that. The enforcement procedures on your landers are complete. Now, provided your crew will stop putting their hands out the windows, they will be much better protected against hostile life forms. 
The technology we are now offering includes blueprints which show how to increase your lander's cargo space to double its present volume. Now we definitely want to get that, but unfortunately again we don't have enough credits, so we might as well spend our last credits on fuel. And luckily, I think we've actually got just enough credits to fill our fuel tanks. Look at that, awesome! Back to 160 fuel and we've used up all our credits now, so we'll leave him in peace. It has been a pleasure dealing with you, Captain. Quite useful that he was just kind of there around that star. I thought he stayed at um, Alpha Centauri, but obviously not. He probably hangs around some of the major stars in the galaxy. So, I guess Alpha Vulpecula is another place to go and meet uh, Greenish. So, let's go to another one of these um, Vulpecula stars. I guess we want to go uh, to the next in the line, which is Beta. Where is that? Am I just going around into a circle? Here we go. Beta Vulpecula. Let's head over to that. Hopefully there's more planets as well. Um, I'm thinking this might actually be a good place to mine, so I guess I could mine here. Um, that's probably for next episode, though. Oh, but jeez, did you see that? There was a person there. I'm going to save the game, because this might be the ores. Or maybe the Andresynth. We'll have to see. Here we go. Hopefully they're not hostile, though. <laughs>